believe it or not, we have Pharisees today. Among the Christians. Always looking to find fault in something. This morning, as I was getting ready to come, some of you may be questioning as to why Pastor Phil doesn't have a tie on today. And I know somebody out there, say, folks, look at him, he don't even have a tie on. But the tie that I usually wear with this shirt, I couldn't find it. And I said, this right here lines up with what I'm going to be talking about today. It's insignificant in God's eye. Feel free to come and be a part of our services. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, we're so honored to be back in the house of the Lord this morning one more time to give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. You may be seated. We just thank you for being here with us this morning. We thank all of those that desired to be here and they weren't able to make it, but we give God the praise, glory, and honor for those of you who have made it so far. We do want to thank God for all our friends and our visitors, our carts and our ladders that we get down through the span of time and our donations, tithes, and offering. We want you to know that we are so thankful for you standing by us and helping us. Praise the Lord to keep the Pentecostal Revival Hour on the move because we're moving forward, praise God, in this uh, session of our uh, Praise the Lord Church. And I just thank God for blessing us on next week. We're going to be having our Fort Valley Revival. We're going to be on Zoom. We're going to start on tomorrow night, and we're going through Friday night, and everybody is invited. If you can't uh, uh, attend the Zoom, praise the Lord, pray for us, because we're planning on having a wonderful time. This will be our last revival of the year, praise the Lord, for this ministry. And I just thank God for blessing us down through the span of time to keep it going, and I thank him for all the, the works of the Lord that each and every one is doing to help keep the ministry afloat. And I want you to know I appreciate everything that you do. And I give you thanks for what you are doing. And I thank you for how you work together as a team to get this work out. Because it's a lot of work go on to keep everything going. But God is able to do all things and there are so many more things that we want to do, but our help is limited. We don't have all the help that we desire to have to do what we would like to do, but we thank God for what we are doing because it's all in the name of the Lord. If God wants us to do more, he'll help us to get there. I just believe it. I have faith in it, and I know it works. I'm a person that I believe in miracles. I believe that God is a miracle worker. And I believe if we obey him and do what he asks us to do, I believe anything that we ask God to do for us, God will do it. All we have to do is finish the faith. Stand on his word. And God will do what he said he'll do. I'm just excited this morning. I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about the ministry. I'm excited about what God is doing. And I do want to give special thanks to all of you and especially uh, Brother Freddie, because he always keeps upbeats of the different things that are going on in the ministry. And we thank you, Brother Freddie, for your work, your work ethics, and, and things that you do because you always make the Lord shine. And that's what we want. We want Jesus to shine. And I thank you for your help. And, and you don't have to ask him. He's always doing things to help the ministry to go forward and help it looks good and, 
And each and every one of you, I just thank God for what y'all are doing. It's all about Jesus. And I thank God for blessing us some. Praise the Lord, us that God have blessed to retire. We thank God. We, we had two more to retire this month. So I thank God for the retirement of the one that, that retired this month. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Praise the Lord. And I know he don't mind me calling his name, but praise the Lord. Brother Walton retired. He retired from Robbins Air Force Base. Praise the Lord. And Missionary Walton retired. <laughs> I thank God for her second retirement. Let's give God a hand of praise for her. And I thank God for each and every one of you. And some more of them told me they're going to be retiring at the end of, at the beginning, I think. One more going to be retiring at the, at the end of the, the beginning of October. <laughs> praise the Lord. But whatever God do, it's all right. Because when one door closes, another door is open. I tell you, if one door close up on you, you might have to watch out because another door is going to open for you. And I thank God again. We're going to get ready and go into our service for today. Assistant Pastor Walton is coming, and as he comes, let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. This time we ask that everyone to stand. Let us all bow our head in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The song we're going to sing, 10,000 Reasons. The song said, Bless the Lord, all my soul, O oh, my soul. 10,000 Reasons. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Bless the Lord of oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, and sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be seen. the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, and sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. You
sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore, forevermore. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, worship this holy. the Lord all my soul oh my soul oh y'all I tell you God is good I said God is good y'all I said God is good saints all the time and all the time God is good do y'all believe that this morning do y'all really believe that this morning God is good all the time he put this song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, oh, his light will shine. God is good. God all the time. Yes, he is. God is good all the time. He put this song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, oh, his light will shine. God is good. God is good. All the time. Now we were sinners and so unworthy. Still for us, he chose to die. He filled up with his Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and testify that his love is everlasting and his mercy. It will never end, God is good All the time He put this song of praise In this heart of mine God is good All the time Through the darkest night Oh, his light will shine God is good God is good All the time shadows all around do not fear he will lead you he will keep you safe and sound he had promised to never leave you nor forsake you cause his word is true God is good all the time he put this 
song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, oh, his light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Though we may not understand all the plans you have for me, my life is in your hand, and through the eyes of faith, I can clearly see God is good. All the time, he put this song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, oh, his light will shine. God is good. God is good. God is good. He's so good. God is good. He's so good. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord another hand. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. If you be a good and get your Bibles. Hold them up and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I believe what it says to believe. I come to the Lazola Pentecostal Church to be taught the word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sins and the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. I am Christ-like, I am born again, I have power over the devil, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen once again. Let's give the Lord another hand of praise. Oh yes, if you will, just bow your heads right where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, praise, and worship. We thank you for yet another chance to come in your presence and also before your people. We pray as we go forth in your word that it is a word of salvation to the lost, word of healing for those who need physical or even spiritual healing. We pray that every yoke of the enemy is destroyed by your word in Jesus name amen amen and amen once again let's give the Lord another hand of praise oh yes you may be seated again we thank the Lord for him allowing us another chance another opportunity to be in his presence and also to come before you Again, we pray that the word today is a word of uplifting, a word of salvation, a word of encouragement, a word of knowledge to all who are in hearing distance. We also want to give God thanks for the founder of this ministry, Apostle Albert Phelps. For him being the rock in this ministry. And we are just continuing to build up on the foundation that he and senior pastor built. Thank God for her being here in the service this morning. Thank God for all the work that she has done down throughout the years. First in assisting Apostle Phelps. Now in leading the ministry. And we thank God for her leadership. 
We also want to thank God for the pastor of the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church, Pastor Lizzie Dinner. Thank God for her being here today. And we thank God for what he is doing in her life. Allowing her to be a living testimony to everyone of what God can do. Because he has performed miracles in her life. First of all, that miracle of salvation of how she was in the past. And how God delivered her. And led her to the position that she is in today as far as being a pastor. We also want to thank God for the pastor of the Forsyth Pentecostal Church, Pastor Willie Wooten. We are continuing to pray for his recovery. And we're trusting and believing for God to work that thing out in his life. And we know that he is able. And so again, we just thank God again. We do want to honor him for his position at the Forsyth Pentecostal Church. Thank God for all the assistant pastors being here today. We also thank God for all the deacons, all the missionaries, all the rest of the saints, friends, and visitors. Now, today I have a message for you. Hopefully, it will be a word of encouragement to us all, a word for us to check ourselves. Because many times, we as Christians, we are so critical on others, even others who are in different households of faith, I mean other Christians. And so today we're going to look at a situation, uh, we have been discussing it in Bible study on Monday evenings. And I'm going to ride off of Sister Pastor DeShazia, the lesson that, that he has been going over with us. Amen. And if you will, go ahead and be opening up your Bibles to St. Mark, chapter 7. And the title of the message this morning is Insignificant Disputes. Some of you may not know what that word means, insignificant. I mean petty. Things that are not really important. We're going to see a situation that Jesus faced in his ministry with his disciples. And we know that as Jesus traveled, he was watched mainly by the Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees. And they were always looking for something to find fault in. Believe it or not, we have Pharisees today. Among the Christians. Always looking to find fault in something. This morning as I was getting ready to come, some of you may be questioning as to why Pastor Phil doesn't have a tie on today. And I know somebody out there, say folks, look at him, he don't even have a tie on. But the tie that I usually wear with this shirt, I couldn't find it. And I said, this right here lines up with what I'm going to be talking about today. It's insignificant in God's eye. 
Sometimes people question, Pastor Phil, why you don't wear a suit? If you were to come up here in this pool of people with all these lights shining on you, you would understand why I don't wear a suit. Because when it feels nice out there in the congregation, it's hot up here. Some of you may question, Pastor Phelps, I never see you wear a robe like most of the preachers I see. You know, there was a man in the Bible by the name of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist wore camel's hair. He didn't wear the priestly garments. And you know what Jesus said about John the Baptist? There was not a man more born among women that was greater than John the Baptist. And you know what John the Baptist ate? Locusts. How many of you in here eat locusts today? I don't see a hand. But the Bible said that he ate locusts and wild honey. And in Jesus' eye, he was the greatest prophet that ever lived. Now that scripture, if you don't believe me, go to St. Matthew. Don't turn now. St. Matthew 11 and 11. This is what Jesus said about John the Baptist. Again, insignificant disputes that we have among the church. Okay? Some may question that the pastor said, why you cut your health? It's because as I matured and seasoned, I began to have spots where hair stopped growing. If you desire an answer, that's what I'm going to give you one. <laughs> so I decided instead of trying to Fight, hold, yeah, hold on to it. That's the word we use now. I may as well just let that go and cut it all off. Some people in the church say all oh, men supposed to wear a beard. Then some people say you out of shade. In God's eyes, insignificant. Some people say women's all not to wear pants. But if you look in the Bible, men didn't wear them either. The Bible say that a woman should not wear that which pertaineth to a man. Because all of our clothes between men and women are cut differently. They're made to fit differently. Now a woman should not fix herself up to look like a man. That's what that's talking about. Man shouldn't fix himself up to look like a woman. That's what they're talking about. I should not be up in here with some women pants on. But back in the Bible days, they wore robes. 
They had men robes. They had women robes. We all know familiar with robes. They go all the way down to your feet. And in the Bible, several times, uh, men were instructed to gird up your loins. That means to tie them up. So you can run or you can fight. I would love to see somebody try to get up on a horse with a robe on. That's going to be a struggle. But I'm just saying these things are insignificant in God's eye. And so we're going to look at what Jesus went through. Again, with, now Jesus didn't have a problem with the sinners, believe it or not. Jesus' pro problem and issues came from so-called religious people. They were the ones who were always disputing with him, trying to hold him to the law, which he came to fulfill. He didn't come to destroy it, but he came to fulfill it, to make it complete, to make it better. Okay, so everyone now at St. Mark chapter 7. I'm going to be beginning reading with verse 1. And it reads, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. Look here now. So Jesus has these Pharisees and scribes coming from the capital city of Jerusalem and when they happen to see some of, see, they looking for a little bit of stuff. They saw Jesus' disciples eat without washing their hands first. Now, it is a good practice to wash your hands before you eat. It's a good practice. It's not a requirement but it's a good practice so I'm not disputing wash your hand I'm not telling you not to wash your hand but this is what they're coming to Jesus with this is the fault that they found verse 3 says for the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands oft Eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. So notice here that the Pharisees and all the Jews, unless they wash their hands often, they don't eat. This is something that they did before every meal. They made sure that they washed their hands. And notice the last part of this. Holding the tradition of the elders. The tradition. See, that's one thing that we people are stuck on is traditions. Some of us, this is what my mama did. This is what my grandmama did. This is what my great-grandmama did. Traditions are things that are passed down from generation to generation. Doctrines and teachings. And so this is what the tradition of the Jews was to wash their hands before they eat. 
Verse 4 says, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, bras and vessels, and of tables. So this is something that they always did. Whenever they would come from the market, they washed their hands. They don't eat unless they wash their hands. Washing your hands before you eat will not get you into the kingdom. I'm going to say it live for the people in the back. <laughs> Washing your hands before you eat will not get you into the kingdom. There's some other thing you need to do that's more important than washing your hands. We don't see this as we read on down. Verse 5 said, Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? So they began to question Jesus. Really what they're trying to do is trap him. So they asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? There are many things, especially among us African Americans, that our people have done traditionally is not according to the will of God. We are some of the most superstitious people there is. Don't let us see a black cat and the cat can't help that he's black. Don't let us see a line on the sidewalk. <laughs> we'll step on a crack and break mama back. I don't know where we get that from. <laughs> don't happen to break a mirror. Seven years of bad luck. I'm so glad that's a lie. But these are just some of the traditions that have been passed down among us. And so this is similar to what the Pharisees are questioning Jesus on about his disciples. About this tradition of eating bread with hands that have not been washed. Verse 6 says, He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So notice how Jesus answers this. Isaiah or Isaiah prophesied about you. Talking about, he's talking to his critics. These Pharisees and scribes that are confronting him call them a hypocrite. Say, so these people, they honor me with their lips, with their speak, with their tongue, but their heart is far from me. This is what God looks at, our heart. Verse 7 says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. 
So he, he again continues on in his statement that in vain they are worshiping God. They're teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. They're teaching, they're saying this is true, but it's a doctrine or commandment of men. It's something that God has not taught. But this is a commandment that men have made up. Then he goes on and says in verse 8, For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. So, he went on to tell them that, hey, they lay aside the commandment of God. They'd rather hold on to the tradition of men. Notice the word that they use in the beginning in, in their accusation in verse 3. The last, middle part of that verse says they eat not holding the tradition of the elders. So what they were holding to was a tradition of man. But Jesus knew that they were following the commandments of God. Verse 9 says, and he said unto them, full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. She let them know, hey, you, you are rejecting the commandment of God. These are things that are more important that you follow the commandment of God instead of keeping your own tradition. Then he's going to go on to tell them something else that they do that many people do today. Verse 10 says, For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mo mother, and whoso curses father or mo mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corbin, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. So now, he's now hitting them with a commandment from God. We know the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter. We have the commandment, honor thy father and thy mother. When you get on over into the book of Leviticus, it talks about what should be done to a person that curses his father or mother. And we know that is a death penalty, a death sentence. Then we had some of these Pharisees and scribes, instead of, of taking care of their parents, they would claim that it is Corbin. What that means is they would take money that they should be using to assist in the welfare of their parents and they're giving it to the church. Ooh, that sounds kind of familiar, like what's going on in our, our times today. So many preachers are requiring people to give money money that they need to take care of their family, take care of their parents, but they're giving it to the church. And they think it's okay. But Jesus, Jesus uh, began to say in the 12th verse, and ye shall suffer him no more to do out for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered, and many such things do ye. So this is what they were doing. Again, they were so hung up on the tradition. The tradition of man instead of the commandments. And this was Jesus trying to let them 
see their error in the way. Instead of being so concerned about whether the disciples washed their hands or not, they need to be concerned about themselves as far as having their sin situation fixed. Because if they were all right, he would not have called them hypocrites. A hypocrite is a person that does not see the error of their way, but they see everybody else's error. So this is what Jesus is trying to correct them on. There is one more set of scriptures that I want everyone to turn to. Let's look at Colossians. Chapter 2. Sir, Colossians chapter 2. And I'm going to start reading with verse 13. And it reads, And you, being dead in your sins, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened, together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, I'm going to pause right there. Some of you say, but I don't know what that's talking about. When we were dead in our sins and uncircumcised, in our flesh. Jesus did something for us. To have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. This is what Jesus did. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances. Ordinances, traditions, all of these things that we place upon people, all of the orders, Jesus took care of that. Nailed it to his cross. Again, these things which were contrary to us, just like even if you look at the shirt that I have on, it has two different blends. A material in it. According to the law, I'm in violation. You can't wear anything, any clothing, according to the law, that has a blend of material. Some of you don't know that. You might need to go back. You need to read Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Some of you may didn't know that. Most of us in here this morning, we in violation according to the law. Just by the clothes we have on. You may not know it. You in violation. But do you think Jesus is worried about the clothes that I, this shirt that I have on this morning? Jesus is concerned about the condition of my heart. Every one of you out there, that's what Jesus is concerned about. So this is the scripture that letting us know that it's a lot of ordinances, a lot of traditions, 
that Jesus blotted out. Talking about that's against us. All this petty, nitpicky stuff. Jesus blotted it out. Took it out of other way. Nailing it to his cross. And having small principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now this next verse, which is, is continuing on from the verse I just read you, it reads, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. One thing I learned many years ago, no matter what you do, somebody's going to be mad. No matter what you do, someone is not going to like you. If you live your life trying to please everybody, you're going to have a miserable life. So whenever the apostle, this is Apostle Paul, he said, let no man therefore judge you in meat. Uh -oh. And what we eat. This is what he's talking about. Now, we know that in the Old Testament time, Mosaic law, there were certain things you couldn't eat. And many of the children of Israel, they followed that law. But God began to see that just because they didn't eat these certain things still didn't keep them from serving these idols. So now he comes with Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus. He made things so much better. So we shouldn't judge each other in what a person eats or in drink or in respect of a holy day or in the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. We know that this Sabbath days is a dilemma within the church. Many people say Saturday is the Sabbath day. Many people say Sunday is the Sabbath day. There was, was a contention going on back in Paul's time, in our time today. A Sabbath day is any day that you dedicate unto the Lord. I don't get upset with people who go to church on Saturday. If that's the day they choose to go, that's fine. I'm glad you go. I don't get upset with people who go to church on Sundays. There are things that are way more important than what day you go to church. God wants you to be holy the whole week. God wants you to be holy every day. Song we used to sing, you must be holy. Be holy every day. You must live righteous. Live righteous all the way. Man, 
mean you have to be holy all the time. You have to be saved all the time. You can't put down your salvation, put down your Holy Ghost. Well, I'm going to finna cut up the day. That may be the day Jesus come back for you. And he's going to judge you according to what he catch you in. You can have lived holy for years and years. And then because of anger or whatever reason, you put your Holy Ghost down. I'm going to cuss me some folks out today. And Jesus in that death angel and catch you in the middle of your cussing folks out. All those years of work of being holy Gone down the drain. So I'm just, just trying to help us as a body, as, as the church, not to be so judgmental and so critical about traditions. As I said earlier, see, God can see through this. If I had on a priestly garment up here this morning, you all would see the priestly garment. But see, God is going to look at me on the inside because we have many with priestly garments on committing all kind of sinful acts. Before they get out the pulpit good, they're looking at Sister Sue's, looking at Sister Sally. And so I'm now looking at Brother Joe. See, this is what God is, this is what God gonna judge us on. God is not concerned about this external stuff. God is concerned about our heart. And so we as the body, and this is what Paul is trying to get straight with these people in, down in Coloss and also with us today. There are so many other more critical things that we ought to be talking about other than judging one another. Everybody understand that? So I hope I helped everyone today. Hope everyone got something out of this. And I wanted to show you in the Bible that if you are being criticized and you're serving God, Jesus was criticized also. And most like most of the time, your crit main criticism is not going to come from the world. It's going to come from, from these so-called religious sisters and brothers. So, I thank God I'm not religious. <laughs> we have more people that are religious than saved. Again, God, he wants to change your heart. Because whenever that heart ever gets changed, all this outside is going to take care of itself. Amen. Now, I'm not going to come up here with a muscle shirt on. I'm not going to come up here trying to, to advertise or to attract the opposite sex. That's not my goal. That's not, that's not. Now, it's a lot of people, preachers do that. They want to get sharp so the people can see them, so the women can see them. Ooh, Pastor Sharp today. If I could whistle good, I'd do it. <laughs> I'm 
They want their glory from people. Even my preaching style. If I wanted to, I can get up here and say, the Lord ha, is my shepherd. Ha, and he shall not want. And I shall not want. Who? With people, yeah! Preach, pastor! But the Lord is not concerned with a hoop and a holler and a shout. Lord wants you to know his word and wants you to apply that word to your heart. I do not see one scripture in the Bible where Jesus was teaching and he ended it with a ha. He talked to the people. He explained things to the people. And so I'm going to cut it out right there. I already done made a lot of folk mad. So I'm going to cut it on off. Give me thank God for everyone coming out to the service. At this time, I'm seeing you pastors coming. Thank you for viewing the Pentecostal Revival Hour telecast. We invite you to watch all of our telecasts. We're on Christian Television Network every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Our programs can also be seen on the Lizella Pentecostal Church Facebook and YouTube page. We invite you to be with us in our services. We're in three locations, Forsyth, Lizella, and Fort Valley, Georgia. We begin with Sunday School at 9 a.m., Followed by morning worship service at 11 a.m. Our Bible study classes are on Mondays and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Join us for Sunday school and Bible study classes on Zoom. So again, thank you for viewing the Pentecostal Revival Hour telecast in Jesus' name.